This video will discuss punching shear reinforcement design and visual foundation. Let's get started. In visual foundation, punching shear reinforcement can be specified at both column piers and pile supports and designed according to the ACI 318 or the CSA A23.3 design specifications. When punching shear reinforcement is specified, the capacity is checked at both the critical section through the slab shear reinforcement and at the critical section outside the slab shear reinforcement, as shown in the image. The controlling unity value, which is the demand to capacity ratio, is reported in the program. Note the punching shear demand will differ at these two critical sections since the area on which the soil can bear is different between the inner critical section and the outer critical section. To demonstrate how to specify punching shear reinforcement in visual foundation, we will start out with a 12 foot square slab that is 16 inches thick. Let's set the cover for the reinforcement and we will use the specified design approach and set the reinforcement for the top and bottom mats. Next, let's place a column pier at the center of the slab and set its shape type to be rectangular and make it six inches by 12 inches. Now let's load the pier with 150 kips of dead load pushing downward on the slab. In the project status, we see that punching shear fails and the unity value exceeds one. Switching to the foundation design view, we can turn on punching shear in the design filter and we see the red punching shear perimeter indicating that punching shear fails. More information about punching shear capacity is shown in the find tool. If we select the pier in the foundation design view, we can modify the pier design in the project manager and select if the pier has punching shear reinforcement. After setting the punching shear reinforcement parameter to yes, several other parameters appear. We can choose if the reinforcement consists of headed studs, or in our case, let's assume that we have stirrups as shown in the image and set this parameter to no. Next, we can choose the yield stress of the reinforcement. AV total is the total area of shear reinforcement around a peripheral line of reinforcement. If the bars in the image are number fours, for example, we would have eight total bars that provide shear reinforcement, and so we would use a value of eight times 0.2 square inches, or 1.6 total square inches of reinforcement. Next, we'll enter the spacing for the peripheral line of shear reinforcement. The X reinforcement group width is the width of the stud or stirrup reinforcement oriented in the global X direction, while the Y reinforcement group width is the width of the stud or stirrup reinforcement oriented in the global Y direction. In both cases, we could enter a value of zero if there is only a single stud rail or a single leg line of reinforcement. The reinforcement offset is the distance from the object face that the shear reinforcement extends outwards. At the top of the two-way shear section, we have the option to override the perimeter offset. If we set this to yes, we can enter a value to be used at both the inner critical section and the outer critical section. Leaving this set to no results in one half of the slab reinforcement depth, D, being used for the offset as shown in the image. With all of the parameters set, we see the outer punching shear perimeter shown on the slab in the design view. In the Find tool, we can see the punching shear demand, VU, the punching shear capacity, VVN, and the unity factor that is now less than one. The details show that VC outer controls the design, indicating that the capacity of the punching shear outside of the reinforcement controls. If we add another peripheral line of reinforcement, we can increase the reinforcement offset which will increase the outer punching shear perimeter and therefore increase the outer punching shear capacity. Now in the Find tool, we see under the details the value for VS and VC inner, indicating that the inner capacity now controls. One thing to note is that the punching shear demand for the inner critical section is about 205 kips, which is larger than the 175 kip demand that we had previously for the outer critical section, which makes sense since there is less soil bearing area to counteract the point load for the inner critical section than there is for the outer critical section. 
In addition to this simple case where punching shear perimeter is interior to the slab, Visual Foundation can handle the case where holes pass through the perimeter. By adding a hole, we see that the outer punching shear controls once again since the outer punching perimeter was reduced by the presence of the hole. In addition to handling holes, the program can accurately calculate punching shear capacity when the column pier is adjacent to the slab's edge or at the corner of the slab. If we add piles to the foundation, we can select the piles in the foundation view and specify punching shear reinforcement for the piles in the same manner that we just did for the pier. Also, we can choose the Canadian CSA A23.3 design specification instead of the ACI 318 specification if needed. In just a few minutes, we have seen how punching shear reinforcement design works in Visual Foundation. We hope you find this feature helpful in the design of your foundations. Thanks for watching and have a great day.